Hello everyone, it's Sean from TaekwondoShawn.com and today we're covering chambers. We're covering that super important part of every kick. When you're about to kick, when you bring your knees up, this is the chamber. It is probably the most important part of the kick. It makes it cleaner, it makes it faster. Let's dive in. Check it out. As always, please make sure that you warm up, make sure you stretch so there's no injuries before you train. There's a video you can see in the links around here that you guys can do my warm-up video so you guys are ready and limber to train. All right, so let's look at the chambers for the three most important kicks. Front kick, front turning kick, roundhouse, and side kick. Chamber number one is the front kick chamber. I bring my knees up as high as I can, my feet as close to my body as I can, I keep my balance, and from here I can deliver my front kicks. Now, bringing it up high enough avoids lower objects that might be in the way and allows me to deliver my kick and then recoiling after I kick allows me to not get grabbed, which is great. So the chamber is important at the beginning and the end of every kick, especially the front kick. Now, after the front kick chamber, all we have to do is turn slightly, and now we have the front turning kick chamber, the aptoyo chuggy chamber. So we go from ap chuggy, front kick, to aptoyo chuggy, front turning kick chamber. Now, front turning kick chamber is the same principle. My knee is bent as much as I can, and then I'm pointing my knee at my target, and then same as front kick, I deliver the kick, bring it back, and put it down. So that's the apto yochagi, the front turning kick chamber. And lastly, we have our front kick chamber, front turning kick chamber, and then we have our side kick chamber, where I pull my knee as close to my chest as I can, and I point my foot blade, my parnal, at my target, and from here I can deliver my yochagi. Now, let's talk for a second, what's the benefits of chambers? Well, practicing chambering allows you to practice your balance, because of course you're on one leg. It allows you to work on your strength of your opposing leg, your supporting leg. It also allows you to work on the hip strength of the leg, which is pulling the leg up. So there's all sorts of benefits. So you gotta make sure you practice these every day. Every single time you train, you should be practicing your chambers, even just a little bit. Now there's a couple of exercises that are good to help you guys work on your chambers. So let's look into it. Here in our dojang, we practice on the ground, and then we practice supported with the wall or a chair or another person. And then we also practice stationary without somebody or without anything to help us so we can really work on that balance. So on the ground, you'd lie on your back. And then all you do is practice your chambers. So I bring my knee up as if I'm about to do front kick. Up chuggy. And then from here, I can do my front turning kick where I lie on my side. I point my knee at the target and I kick. And then from here, I can practice bringing it in for the side kick, making sure my foot blade is what's facing the target, and then extending the kick from there. Now, what we do is we also practice the kick from the chamber while sitting down, just to wake up the muscles and warm them up. So you can line your back, bring any up as high as you can, and practice front kicks with each leg. Then same thing, front turning kick, pointing your knee at the target, practice your kicks, and then side kick, same thing. Chamber up, push it up, chamber up, Push it up. Now, once you've got it on the ground, it's really nice to start putting it standing up because honestly, that's where we're delivering the kicks. So, if you can grab a chair, if you can grab the wall, if you can grab another person, you can start doing your chambers and just holding it. I can remember our grandmaster used to make us hold the chambers for each of the kicks, and then he would put a cup, a little like Dixie cup of water on your knee. And he'd make you hold it for like one minute, two minutes, five minutes. And then if you spilled the water, you had to clean it up. You really didn't want to spill the water. And of course, over time, your knee would drop and you have a little bamboo sword. So you'd really want to keep it up as high as you can. So all you can do is stand up, grab onto your support, and then bring your chamber up and just hold it. You can do this while you're watching your favorite show. You can do this while you're bored at home. But the main thing is, hold it, and then you're still building up the isometric exercise here. So you're staying stationary, don't move. All you're doing is holding it up. And you're still building up the muscles and your hip flexors and your legs. Good. And then you can practice the same thing with the aptoya jaggi, the front turning kick chamber. Just make sure your shoulders, hips, and knee all align when you're making this chamber. Good. And you want your knee needs to be higher than your foot, never vice versa. And then you can hold it for as long as you want. Again, you could put a cup of water. <laughs> and then the last one you can do is a side kick chamber. So you want your butt, shoulders, and foot in line for this one. And then from here, you can kick straight up and then you hold it again for 10, 20 minutes, two hours, whatever you think is right for you.
Now, of course, the next phase is without any support. Now, this is going to get more difficult, not necessarily because of holding it, but just because of the balance aspect. And that's really going to work on the smaller muscles, the stabilizer muscles in your legs, your supporting leg, right? So let's say I'm doing my front kick here. This leg's going to get sore in my hip flexor, but it's also this leg's going to get sore because it's supporting this leg, and all those little muscles that are trying to keep me upright are working super hard. And so they're going to become really strong too. And this is going to help me with all my training. When you're ready, you can switch to the front turning kick. Hold it. Again, you can hold it for as long as you want. Main thing is keep your body upright, work on your balance, point your knee at the target. And then, of course, the side kick chamber. Now, two exercises that help us at our school is we do uh, 10 kicks in each chamber. So for example, we'll grab onto the wall and we'll put our front kick chamber up, our up tuggy, and then perform one, two, three, four, ten, up tuggies, and then right away, other leg, and then right away, up throw your tuggy, front turning kick, ten times, one, come back to the chamber, two, every time, keep it clean, three, four, and then right away, chamber up, yup tuggy, side kick, one, two, three, ten times, and then at the very end, we go back and we do it again with 20, and then we do it again with 30, and then it seems like our grandmaster, our master, always wanted to get to 100, which of course would be 10, 20, 30, 40, but we'll leave it up to you guys. Now that one might be a little bit over the top, especially at the beginning, but another good one is just the holding version, but you're actually holding the leg with your arms as well. So it's gonna help you actually go further than and higher than you can usually go by bringing your own leg up, especially based on your strength. And then it'll also help you with the supporting leg because it's working hard too. So what I mean is, when I do my front kick like this, I can bring it up as high as I can. But then if I grab it with my hands, I can easily bring it higher than I could without my hands. I'm still working on my supporting leg muscles and I'm also helping stretch inside the hip flexors for this chamber. And then after a few seconds, 10, 20 seconds, you can easily switch over to front turning kick. So you're grabbing your knee, grabbing your shin, grab your ankle, whatever you want, and then pull it back. You want to ideally get your foot on your butt for the front turning kick chamber like this. Mm -hmm. Remember to point your knee at the target. And then after 10, 20, 30 seconds, you go to the side kick chamber, and you're pulling it to your chest as much as you can while still maintaining your foot blade looking at the target. And then you go back and you do the other leg as well. So I hope this video helped you guys with your chamber. Chamber is the first thing that happens at every kick. Step one, bring up your chamber. And then step two, kick. And then step three, back to the chamber. There's a whole video on recoil that I've done before. I'll link it around here somewhere as well. But the main thing is, chamber is so important. So make sure you guys practice your chamber, especially for the most important kicks, the front kick, the front turning kick, and the side kick. But remember, every kick has a chamber, so make sure you guys practice that well as well. Okay? Train hard, and we'll see you guys on the mat.